Hi! Today we're going to take a look at solving quadratic equations by factoring. But let's remind ourselves what a quadratic equation is. It's a polynomial equation where your highest exponent is 2. So we've already learned how to solve linear equations, highest exponent of 1, in other words you don't see the exponent, and quadratic highest exponent now of 2. So what are the tools that we need? What skills do we need to have in order to solve using this method? First of all, we need to be able to set an equation equal to 0. 0 is going to be very important to us here. Also how to factor a polynomial. This seems to be a, a big issue for a lot of students, so if it is for you, you're not alone, okay? But if it takes you a little bit more time than somebody else, don't stress over it. Just keep practicing. And also, how to solve a linear equation. So if you have those three things mastered, then this method shouldn't be too big of a problem for you. All right, so let's take a look at an example. It's a quadratic equation, x squared minus x equals 12, but it's not set equal to 0. So we need to move that 12. So we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. Be careful here, common error sometimes, especially when students are nervous. They write the negative 12 over there and they just automatically combine it with whatever's on top of it. If they're not like terms, you can't combine them. So we'll just write it out, x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. So here's kind of your thought process when you get to a test and you're really nervous. I'm solving. What is my goal when I'm solving? To get x equals a number. Just a single x equals a constant. We have two x's here and they're not like terms, so we can't combine them into one x term. Okay. I could try to get this x by itself, but I'm just going to end up with an x squared over here. That, that doesn't give me x equals a number. That will give me x equals something that has an x with it. So we need to somehow reduce this x squared down to a single x. So you think back to your tools, what have we learned that we can do with a trinomial factor? Because when you factor, you end up with an x and an x, which is what we want. So we're going to factor the left-hand side. We get x plus 3 times x minus 4. Now here's where the specialness of 0 comes in handy. When you have things being multiplied, factors being multiplied to equal 0, one of them has to be 0. The only way to multiply and get 0 is for something to be 0. 0 is the only number that that's true for. So if we set each of these factors equal to 0, x plus 3 either equals 0 or the x minus 4 equals 0. Now we have two linear equations and you know how to do that. So we're going to solve both of these linear equations. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides here, adding 4 to both sides there, and we get two solutions, x equals negative 3 and x equals 4. Two solutions is fine because we have a highest exponent of 2, so we can have up to two solutions. Linear, we only had a single x, therefore we would only get a single solution. Okay? So now I want you to try. Remember, set it equal to 0, factor, set each factor equal to 0, and solve. So go ahead and pause the video, and then when you're ready to take a look at some of the solutions and see how you did, hit play. All right, are we ready? Okay, we have a quadratic. It's already set equal to 0, so we're going to factor. Now we're going to factor a little quickly. If you're still having trouble with the factoring method, be sure that you look at the videos and get some more help. So let's see, factors of negative 6. We've got a negative 6 and a positive 1 set equal to 0. Now what some people do because it's uh, a solving sometimes they get so excited that they factored correctly they stop. So be sure that you continue down the equal 0 to remind you that you're not done yet you still have to solve. So we're going to set each linear equation equal to 0 x minus 6 and x plus 1 equaling to 0 and then we solve. Add 6 to both sides and we get x equals 6, subtract 1 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 1. So there are our two solutions. Remember we have a highest exponent of 2, therefore we can have up to two solutions. For some of you, especially with the use of color, what might help as far as your notes is to highlight the fact that your highest exponent is 2, 
remind you what kind of equation it is. Highlight the fact that it's set equal to zero because it needs to be. And then maybe make note or write them in different color, the two binomial parentheses to help you remember that factoring is the first method that you want to try, okay? Same thing here, you know, it's set equal to zero. We've got an exponent of two, so we're gonna try to factor the left-hand side. It's a little bit more involved here. We have a three X and an X, and then factors of 12. Looks like we're gonna have a six and a two. Yep, double checking. Now we're gonna set each linear equation equal to zero. So again, we have to know how to factor, we have to know how to solve linear equations. So we'll do this a little quickly. And now divide both sides by three. So our first solution is a negative two thirds. But don't forget you have a second one. Subtract six from both sides and we get x equals negative six. And now the last one. What's the problem here? Your highest exponent is two, but, you know, a little frowny face, not equal to zero. Any kind of notation that will help you to remember come test time, what's wrong with the equation? What needs to be fixed? We've got to set it equal to zero. So if we add five to both sides, let me show you a common mistake that I often see. Now on the right hand side, negative five plus five does add up to zero, which is our goal. But when you throw the positive five over here, be careful because some people are tempted to combine these two merely because you wrote it underneath it, okay? They're not like terms, so we can't do that. But I see it, especially when people are nervous on a test. So just be aware of it and write them out left to right. We've got two x squared minus 11 x plus five equals zero. Now we can factor um, when we have 2x and x, and that would give us a negative 1, negative 5. And now each of these need to be set equal to 0. Just to give us a little bit more room, I'm going to write them out here. 2x minus 1 equals 0, and x minus 5 equals 0. So on the first equation, if we add 1 to both sides, that will leave us with a 2x equals 1, divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 1 half. On the right equation, we add 5 to both sides of the equal sign, and we're left with x equals 5. Two solutions. Make any notations that you need to that's going to help you when you study. So how did you do? Let's take a look at some of the common stumbling blocks for students when they're solving using this method. First of all, did you set it equal to zero? Remember, zero is the only special number that that's gonna work for. Did you factor it correctly? Again, this is usually the biggest stumbling block, especially if you're weak in your multiplication tables, and a lot of people are, so it, it's gonna take you some time. But if it takes you longer than somebody else, who cares? I mean, really. I always told myself I'm gonna be the last one to finish my test that way I know that I'm focused and I'll let everybody else do what they want to do and that was kind of my goal in test taking. So maybe that'll work for you, but don't stress. If it takes you a little bit of time, go for it. Then, did you set each factor equal to zero and then did you solve each of those correctly? So let's remember a few things. Does it have an x squared? If that is your highest exponent, then it's quadratic. You need to set it equal to zero, factor, if possible, and if it's not, we'll show you a different method later that will work. Did you set each factor equal to zero and then solve? So thanks for watching. I hope this helped. But remember, if you still need more help, ask your teachers, ask your friends, look for more videos. There are resources out there. Don't let your pride keep you from passing. You're not alone in this, okay? <laughs> okay. Hopefully we'll see you again soon.